how can we be present to the suffering of the world, um, witness, witness and make a stand for justice or uh, against the injustice we see, and at the same time trust that everything that is happening is part of a divine order? Um, how can one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a yeah. wonderful question. I think that's the question we have to keep asking ourselves and, and working with. It's the key question. And of course, every true question, every profound question carries in itself its own solution. If you live with that question, you're going to be guided. You're going to be shown the answer. You have to live with that conundrum. One um, response to the question would be to point to a story. And it's the story of three sheikhs, mm -hmm. three Sufi teachers. And the teachers were asked a question. The question was, what do you do when you see someone do something wrong? And the first sheikh answered, if I see someone do something wrong, I correct them. I call attention to the problem and I show them that it needs to be fixed. That's the first answer. The second sheikh gave a different answer. The second sheikh said, if I see something wrong, I look past it and, and look to what's beautiful and draw the attention there and build on what's beautiful and don't, don't focus on what's wrong. And then the third sheikh answered, wrong? What wrong? <laughs> so three very different answers. And yet each one has its meaning, it has its truth. And in fact, in Sufism, these answers correspond to different stages on the path. And there's a fourth stage too. So the first stage, and everyone has to go through the stage and still even having gone through it, it remains valid even still. And that is, it's called the stage of Sharia. And that means working to establish fairness in the world. It's the level of um, ethics and uh, ensuring fair play and not uh, taking more than is your due and um, ensuring reciprocity in all human dealings. So that's the stage in which um, the pursuit of justice and insisting on justice and fighting for justice is absolutely um, necessary. Then there's a second stage beyond Shari, which is called Tarika. And Tarika means that you, you're not simply concerned with um, an even score, but you're making an effort to go beyond reciprocity and to be generous, to be forgiving, to be more kind than legally you need to be. So the level of tarika has to do with focusing on beauty and cultivating beauty and, and uh, trying to embody it and trying to build it in this world. And that's another, another way. Then the third sheikh, answers from the perspective of hakikat. And hakikat means absolute truth, all encompassing oneness. And from that perspective, there is no duality. Everything is divine. Everything is an expression of the eternal in time. And everything expresses and reveals the nature of the one life that is forever. And if one is in that state, one is beyond judgment, one is beyond saying this is right and this is wrong, one is just witnessing 
God in this moment in everything. And that that's a true, a true experience. The fourth stage is to weave them together yes. because all three are needed. Yes. We do need to, we need, we need to, we need to fight for justice and make sure that those who are disadvantaged are given the chance to um, receive what is their due. We also need to be careful not to get stuck in, in a mode in which in fighting for justice, we fall into a polarity where we can't see the humanity anymore of ones whose tyranny we're challenging. And all too often, you know, a freedom fighter runs the risk of becoming a tyrant himself or herself if one isn't careful. You see how, you know, a res resistance rises up to overturn a regime, and then those who come into power just replicate the same dynamics of power all over again. So, yes, um, the cause of justice is important, but the other aspects to be integrated and the second aspect of Tarika again has to do with working toward the beautiful being guided by beauty Allahu jamil wa yuhibbul jamal is the Sufi saying God is beautiful and loves beauty and so in every effort that we undertake for the cause of justice or for any cause let it be beautiful not only outwardly beautiful aesthetically beautiful but beautiful in manner, beautiful in intention, beautiful in that it's working toward and is waking up to that um, that grace, that fineness, that that um, musicality that we that that makes us um, swoon when we see it in someone or you see it in a community or see it in nature that it reminds us of why we're here in the first place it reminds us why this universe exists it exists to reveal this beauty and then we've got to have this ability also to say that ultimately there's a there's a, a fuller beauty you know sufis speak of two different um, kinds of beauty. And one is called Jamal, and the other is called Husn. And Jamal is that beauty that you could say it has an opposite. The opposite of Jamal is ugliness. And we want to, you know, avoid um, ugliness in our manner, in how we speak, in what we do. We want to avoid ugliness. So it's aspirational to work toward a, a fineness, a, a thoughtfulness, a graciousness, a, a beauty that is evident. But that even that kind of beauty still is part and parcel of a limited view of the world, a view in which there's always something better and something worse. Whereas there's a higher beauty, um, and that is the ultimate beauty, which is called husn. And that has no op opposite. And that's the beauty that you, where you see in the long durée, in the ultimate scheme of things, that, or even in the essence of this here and now, everything is included, everything is encompassed by and contained within that perfection that can never be marred, that can never be broken, that is already perfect and all pervading. So that is the, the beauty that rejects nothing, accepts everything, and goes to, to the essence.